Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, my channel, Cineram, and uh, I'm doing my Steven Soderbergh series uh, over the next few weeks. Uh, this is episode two, and the first film I'd like to be talking about is The Underneath, uh, which is a noir, which is based on a novel called Criss Cross by Don Tracy. Uh, the um, script was uh, co-written by uh, Soderbergh and of course directed by Soderbergh. Um, this is the film they made after King of the Hill. Uh, it stars Peter Gallagher, who was also one of the major uh, actors in um, Sex, Lies, and Videotape, and uh, basically it's a noir. It has a lot of noir characters and noir styling and a noir plot. It's about a uh, kind of a, um, an unreliable sort, a guy who likes gambling, a guy who's kind of irresponsible, um, coming home uh, to his hometown after a long time of being away uh, for his mother's wedding. His mother is getting married to uh, a man after his father died uh, some years back. Um, and um, though he's a uh, attempted to straighten his ways out, he does sort of get sucked into a scheme involving his former girlfriend, who he sort of left high and dry when uh, he lost a bunch of bets and just skipped town so he wouldn't have to pay anybody. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, uh, this, the, um, basically the whole sort of structure of the movie is sort of uh, a real disjointed narrative, uh, like uh, these kinds of things often are. It jumps from the present to the past to um, an immediate present involving this uh, robbery that he's attempting to help pull off. Uh, he got a job with an armored truck company uh, and uh, is uh, sort of in on this scheme to uh, rob one of the uh, deliveries of uh, a ton of cash, over a million dollars. Um, things don't go quite according to plan, um, and uh, there's involved with a lot of very shady characters, including his own brother, who is a police officer, but he is nevertheless a very creepy guy, actually. Um, it's funny, his ex-girlfriend actually tells him about something that he did that she found very disturbing, and you never really quite find out whether or not that's actually true or not. Maybe it was something that actually happened, or maybe she just made it up in order to trick him into doing something. It's just hard to say for sure, because no particular character can be uh, really trusted, uh, except, of course, for the baddest of the bad guys, who's played by William Fickner. Um, this is the first movie that I saw him in, and he's gone on to do a lot of uh, really uh, memorable uh, creepy guy character roles. He had a, a one scene in Crash. Uh, he, uh, he's been in uh, movies like Heat and Strange Days, uh, and he had the lead um, uh, role in a television series called Invasion, I think. Um, anyway, he's a really good character actor, and he's very, very kind of just like off-putting <laughs> in general. But he's a really cool guy, though. Oh, he's in Go as well. That's one of, his, one of my favorite movies that he's in. He, uh, he was a, a cop in Go. who was just sort of odd and creepy. Um, uh, the ex-girlfriend uh, is uh, played by Allison Elliott. It's the first movie I saw her in. And um, also another uh, major cast member is uh, Elizabeth Shue, who plays uh, an employee of the bank that uh, Peter Gallagher is uh, trying to rob. Um, it's very convoluted, uh, and uh, there's a lot of very stylized filmmaking involving flashbacks and flash-forwards. He uses that same trick he uses in Sex, Lies, and Videotape, where he allows the dialogue to play out over the visuals of a different scene um, as time leaps back and forward. One thing that I wasn't really crazy about was the way he uses filter, color filters in this movie. Um, Sometimes you're looking through a piece of colored glass at somebody, and sometimes it's just very obvious he's got some kind of colored filter on the lens. Um, you know, the style, I like the photography all in all, but the style itself was not uh, my favorite. It just sort of stood out and was a little distracting. Um, also, I had a little problem. The DVD, although this movie is available on DVD, it isn't an anamorphic DVD. It's not one of those squeezed images that is automatically unsqueezed by a widescreen TV. So if you're watching a 16x9 monitor, in order to get it to fill the entire frame, you've got to actually you change the settings on your TV in order to magnify the picture. Um, not a bad movie. Uh, pretty decent, actually. Um, one that I like. Um, maybe a few too many twists. I don't know. Um, there's some really good stuff in there. Uh, just, just memorable scenes involving uh, Peter Gallagher trying to negotiate with people, <laughs> and, and sort of there's this uh, scene where you know he's got to basically convince um, the uh, really dangerous guy William Fickner that he's not actually uh, in a relationship with Allison Elliot because Allison Elliot is supposed to be with the dangerous guy now, <laughs> so uh, he has to lie while keeping his eyes locked right on this guy and let not let his eyes wander around as he's making up stuff. So, you know that's that's a tense situation. Um, although I do like this movie and think it's decent, Soderbergh has a different opinion of this movie. He was not really happy with this movie, or at least he was not happy with having to make it, um, because it just seemed, I don't know, a little too standard for him, or just not something that he wanted to aspire to. He didn't want to be one of those guys that was just 
you know, hacking out genre pieces uh, as a director for hire for the rest of his career. So after he made The Underneath, he took a little break and made a film called Schizopolis on his own time with his own dime. Uh, and and, uh, and this is a highly, highly unusual movie. I think it's shot on 16mm, and he cast himself in several of the major parts, and his wife, or now his ex-wife, uh, whose name is Betsy Brantley, um, as his wife in the movie. Um, there's a very, very, it's even more convoluted in, in this movie, uh, and involves, uh, the main character is a guy named uh, Fletcher Munson, who works uh, as an office drone for uh, a sort of an L. Ron Hubbard-type figure called T. Asma Schwitters. Um, and when the speechwriter uh, dies of a heart attack, uh, the speechwriter for the company dies of a heart attack, he's drafted by his boss to write the speech for an upcoming presentation, uh, which he's kind of nervous about. Um, he's having marital problems. Uh, she's having an affair with a dentist who is also played by Soderbergh. His name is Dr. Korchek, and Dr. Korchek in turn becomes interested in a woman who is also played by Betsy Brantley, who is referred to as attractive woman number two. In the meantime, Betsy Brantley has a fantasy about um, meeting uh, an alternate version of herself who's also in a relationship with a, yet another character played play by Soderbergh who speaks French, or at least his dialogue is overdubbed in French. There's a lot of really bizarre stylistic uh, uh, things thrown into this movie involving characters using nonsense phrases or using very basic uh, 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 terms to represent the lines of dialogue that they would have if they were speaking ordinary dialogue. Um, there's a lot of cutaways, just odd stuff, a narrator. Uh, characters are interviewed in character about what's going on in the storyline. Uh, there's newscaster footage, there's um, a lot of high-speed photography and just stylized interludes. Um, you've got this guy who's sort of explaining the whole philosophy behind the film, who just <laughs> he's talking to camera, but the crew is constantly interfering with what he's doing. Uh, and then there's a subplot involving some guy named Elmo, who's working as a bug sprayer and having affairs with the women whose house uh, he, he's, he's spraying down. And then he's uh, distracted by other people who are like, they sort of invade the movie and take him out of that situation and put him in another situation where he's like fighting people. And he's not happy about that either. Half the, movie, half the time I just don't really understand what's going on. And I saw this movie a long time ago and really didn't understand it. And the most recent time, a few days ago when I rewatched this movie, I think I kind of get a good handle on what's going on for the most part. But it's one of those things where I could probably watch it four or five times and really not figure everything out. But I'd be interested nonetheless. So that's a fun movie. Um, actually pretty funny and uh, crazy. And it's really funny because Soderbergh, of course, isn't an actor by trade. He's a director and he also does a lot of the technical work on his movies. Um, but he's really good in this movie, really a lot of fun. And there are uh, a lot of times where he really strongly reminds me of John Malkovich, <laughs> just in the way he speaks and some of his mannerisms. Um, so uh, yeah, all in all, really good uh, uh, experience for him to have as a, as a director because it sort of recharged him and then he went on to do more studio pictures, including the next two movies, which I will be talking about, called Out of Sight with George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez and The Limey with Terrence Stamp and Peter Fonda. And those are two of his very best movies. So uh, clearly doing Schizopolis was a, a great experience for him because it really sort of invigorated him creatively. Um, if you have seen either of these two movies, um, please uh, let me know what you think of them. Leave a video response if you want to. Uh, if you want to watch Out of Sight and Align Me ahead of time and post videos uh, on my video next week, ne next Thursday, uh, please do so. Um, so that's all I got for now, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, check some of this stuff out. Uh, and um, yeah, as always, I'll see you again next week. Bye.